Stories. It's Shed Time Stories with Izzy. Are you ready for us to share a new story? I hope so. The title of the book I have chosen is And Nancy the Clever Spider. The author who's retold the story is Susie Lynn and the illustrator is Barbara Cantini. The author is the person who has written the story and the illustrator is the person who draws all the pictures. If you have this book at home, you can read along with me. Can you tell what this story might be about? Shall we find out? And Nancy the Clever Spider. And Nancy the Spider looked at the world around him and sighed a big sigh. He was a very clever, very wise spider and he knew a lot about most things. But he wanted to be cleverer and wiser still. It'll be easy, said Anansi, to nobody in particular. I'll simply gather up all the wonderful knowledge in the world, all the brilliant cleverness and all the super skills to do everything. First, and Nancy had a big problem to solve. Where am I going to keep all the wisdom and cleverness when I find it? He thought to himself. I'll need something very big and very safe to put it in. So Anansi set to work and made an enormous pot, especially for the task. In fact, it was so enormous that Anansi had trouble lifting it. muttered under his breath. The next day, and Nancy set out with his pot in search of every bit of wisdom that he could find. He travelled far and wide and saw lots of wonderful new things. But most importantly, he learnt lots too. Every day, and Nancy added new things to his pot of wisdom and every day his pot became heavier. Finally, there was no space in the pot for anything else, which was just as well because Anansi could hardly lift it. Then Anansi started to worry. Where can I hide my pot of wisdom to keep it safe? He thought looking around and scratching his head with one of his eight legs. Will it be safe in a hole in the ground? He wondered. No, the rabbits live there. Maybe it'll be safe in a cave? He pondered. No, the bats live there. Or in the forest? He considered. No, all kinds of chattering creatures live there. Just as Anansi was running out of ideas, he spotted a thorn tree standing all on its own. Its trunk was covered in huge spikes and even its leaves were spiky. Perfect! shouted Anansi in delight. Using vines to tie his enormous pot to his tummy, Anansi started to climb the tree very slowly. And Nancy was so busy struggling with his heavy pot that he didn't notice his son Nichikuma watching his every move. What a meal he's making of it, laughed Nichikuma to himself. And he was right. Every time Anansi tried to climb the spiky tree, the pot of wisdom slipped and slid, making climbing very difficult indeed. At last, Nichikuma could keep quiet no longer. Hey, Dad! he shouted. Tie the pot to your back, not your front. It'll make climbing much easier. And Nancy almost fell out of the tree in surprise. Ouch! he yelled as he caught hold of a particularly big spike. 
how annoying that Mitch Kuma had spotted him and how annoying that his idea was such a good idea. After all, it was he and Nancy who had the pot of wisdom. And Nancy threw the pot of wisdom down in rage. As the pot crashed to the ground, it shattered and tiny bits flew everywhere. And so did all the wisdom that was inside. All the knowledge, all the skills, all the cleverness flew free and up, up, up into the air, floating away on the breeze. As Anansi and Mitch Kuma watched, storm clouds gathered above them. Suddenly, there was a deafening clap of thunder and it started to rain. It rained and rained and rained. It rained so hard that the water washed the wisdom out of the air, onto the land and into the streams and rivers. The rivers of wisdom flowed into the sea and as the tides went in and out around every bit of land, the wisdom began to spread around the whole wide world. Wow! was all Anansi and Nijikuma could say as they watched the amazing sight from the very highest, very driest place they could find. So, thanks to Anansi and his clever son, there is now a little bit of wisdom for everyone in the world. And that includes you. The end. What a lovely story. I think we get our knowledge all the things that we learn and our cleverness from everywhere we go, all the people we talk to and all the stories that we read. I hope you enjoyed today's Shed Time Story. If you want to, you can like, share and subscribe to Shed Time Stories and then you will be ready for the next book for us to share together. Bye bye.